Hey, what's going on everyone? Today I'm going to show you how to set up secure copy on a Cisco switch. Now, in order to do this, um, you're going to need a couple of tools. Uh, secure copy server. You can download this at uh, solarwinds.com. And basically what this is going to do is this is going to hold the device configuration files and the iOS images. The other thing um, you're going to need is if you go over to https putty.org where it says download putty, you can click here. Scroll down just a bit. And we're not going to be downloading putty, but rather this executable file here, putty secure copy.exe. Once you have those two files downloaded, go ahead and install secure copy server. And one of the things that you'll need to do is open up a port on your firewall. So go to firewall, advanced settings, inbound, create new rule, and click on the radio button port, click next, TCP, type in 22, click next. Going to allow this connection and click next. I'm going to select all the defaults here or leave all the def uh, leave all these values at default and click next. Give it a name. You can say SSH or anything that you want to and click finish. I already have this um, configured, so I'm just going to cancel that. And now I'm going to talk briefly about why you might want to use this um, to use secure copy as your protocol of choice. So if you're transferring files over the network using TFTP, you know, there's nothing wrong with this. Um, you know, TFTP is a great uh, protocol. I mean, it does, it works pretty much flawlessly most of the time. The only problem with this is that if you, anybody who is doing any sort of reconnaissance on your network, if they're capturing that data, they can follow this um, TFTP data or follow the UDP stream. And what Wireshark will do is it will basically give them um, this blueprint, a partial blueprint of your network. Now, I don't have anything interesting really going on here. This is basically a, a, a test switch that, um, you know, has barely anything on it. Um, but if this was a core switch, you know, you would, of course, have, you know, some IP addresses, descriptions, and probably some other very valuable information on here. The other thing that you have in here are hashes. You can copy these hashes. And you can put them into, you know, a script that you can find that will break these hashes for you. And what this script essentially does is it takes, you know, every single password that's in a, in a, in a word list. And I have uh, router passwords in this word list. And it takes every single one of those um, passwords individually and it runs it against the MD5 hash algorithm, which prints out a message digest. Okay, it just it then compares that message digest with this hash, and if there is a match frown, then it prints out match frown. I can run this script, and as you can see, that here is the password of this device. So once a user um, basically captures um, you know, this hash right here, and they have now have the password, they can, they can do a lot of damage to this switch, okay? And one way they can do that is by just basically formatting the entire flash, okay? Once you uh, accept this value and reset, I mean, that doesn't just destroy the running configuration or the startup configuration, that that also destroys the image that's in the flash as well. 
And once that's reset, um, you know, it's going to take a while to get that thing back up and running again. Now, there, there are things that you can do to protect that from, you know, uh, being a complete disaster, such as implementing role-based access control and, um, you know, also uh, configuring um, the device uh, configuration file from deletion with, I think it, the command is um, uh, secure boot config, and also you can issue a secure boot image to protect it from deleting, from being deleted. But that's assuming that the person that is managing your network um, has done that already. And if they haven't, well then, you're kind of in a lot of trouble. So to begin um, configuring secure copy, the first thing that we need to do is we need to create the, uh, the SSH keys on this device. So crypto key generates and then RSA and we will specify the label as sw1.section.local and I'll give it a modulus of 2048 bits. Okay. Now to really just sort of um, enable it would seem like it would be just be as easy as, as saying IP is secure copy server enable. But secure copy is actually dependent on um, authentication and authorization method lists in, in order to work. So to begin issuing AAA commands, we first need to um, set up uh, type AAA, new model, and then set our authentication method list. So authentication, login, default, and I'll set um, the first method as local and then enable. And I also need to set up a method list for authorization at the exec level. And let's just say default, I'm not going to give it a name, and specify the local user database. Okay? So this is essentially necessary because um, you know, if a user, if you're going to be issuing that, um, if you're going to be transferring files via the, the secure copy command, um, this is actually, you, you need um, authorization at the exec level. Okay. I'm going to give, um, type in our user, so secure copy user, and we'll give it just, I'll just give it a privilege level of 15, and then type in the password. Password 4321. Okay. Before we actually issue the transfer, we'll just say uh, debug IP secure copy so we can see some of the details that are happening while the transfer is um, taking place. We'll say uh, copy, running config, and then secure copy. And just follow the on-screen prompts. Uh, the destination username, yes, is secure copy. And then I'll just leave, you can give this whatever name that you want to for um, the configuration file. I'm just going to leave it at default. Switch uh, one config. Okay. So it copied that file with that file name. It was received OK. All right. And that, of course, was sent over. Oops. The SSH protocol. OK. Right there. Oh, okay. If we look at that file now, we can see that there it is. We can open that. See, there is our user we just created. And 
those are the authentication authorization commands that we just created as well. All right. So now um, to transfer files to the to the device, one of the um, files that we downloaded in the beginning was this um, uh, putty secure copy executable. Okay. Wherever you have this um, installed, I just basically have it installed. Um, when you actually set up and install the SolarWinds secure copy server, it basically creates this directory for you, um, SSFTP underscore root. All right. And this is where I have that file um, basically placed right now. So to use it, here it is in my root. If I look, I can see that there it is right there. And and basically, just to use this file, you just need to be in the directory of wherever wherever it is that it's uh, it's located. Okay. So I'm going to just be transferring this um, this test file over to the uh, to the switch. And to do that, type in um, uh, putty secure copy executable. And I'm going to force the secure copy protocol. I need to type in the password, which is password 4321. I need to specify the user, which is, or actually, I think I just need to specify, yeah, OK, the file that I actually want to transfer. And then I need to specify the user, so secure copy uh, user at the IP address of the device where I want to store this file right here, which is in Flash. And the name that I want to call the file um, when I store it in Flash. And I'll just give it the same exact name. Secure copy text dot txt. Um, it's probably going to give you this warning uh, because it was the first time that you generated, if it was the first time that you generated those RSA keys, it's going to give you this warning. I know that this is, these are the RSA keys that I did generate, so I'm just going to hit yes here. And it essentially transfers that file over the SSH protocol. And you can see that there it is, there is the file and it was received OK. If I look in the flash now, secure copy text, I can see that there is that um, file. Now, and I was just doing this basically just as a test. If this was um, an, an image file or a running configuration file, you would just you know, basically do, do it the same way, just with a different file name. Okay. Um, now, if you want to um, transfer files from the switch to the server, um, the only thing that you have to do is just reverse the order in this case. So this was the file right here that I transferred, okay, this secure copy text.txt file that I transferred um, uh, to the switch. And now I'm just going to reverse the order. All right. And this time I actually have to specify the absolute path. OK, so I'm just going to say C local um, secure FTP underscore root. And I'll just say secure copy T uh, text dot txt. And let me, um, let me delete that file right now so I can show you that it does, it basically is put right back once I uh, hit enter here. Okay, so it did copy successfully and it's put right back. And that was pulled from um, 
that was pulled from the switch. Okay, so hopefully that's been helpful. And that's how you set up um, secure copy.